These games obviously never heard the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most bizarre changes in video game remakes and reboots. For this list, we're looking at changes made by video game remakes and reboots that were just downright absurd and befuddling. Let's go. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to check out the full song at the link below. Number 10. Turning it into an FPS. Shadowrun. How would you feel if CD Projekt Red came out tomorrow and said, forget it, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't an action RPG anymore. We're going full-blown Call of Duty. Well, that's precisely what happened with Shadowrun, an all-around solid tabletop RPG game for the SNES that was run into the ground by its own 2007 remake. Instead of retaining its unique mechanics and story, Shadowrun was transformed into an online multiplayer FPS. And not a very good one. Maybe critics would have been more forgiving had FASA Interactive tacked on a single-player campaign. But the game we got was notably lean in terms of content, prompting many to call the price tag unfairly steep. Sadly, Syndicate suffered a very similar fate. Number 9. Removing Combat – Silent Hill – Shattered Memories Look, we're not saying combat needs to be in every horror game, but the way Shattered Memories went about removing combat wasn't exactly elegant or inspired. Rather than giving us some way to fend off monsters, the game opted for segments in which the player must frantically run through a series of doors to escape pursuing enemies. On paper, this might seem like a good alternative. It certainly keeps the tension high. Unfortunately, in application, these chases begin to feel repetitive and at times downright frustrating especially since they require you to follow specific paths in order to escape successfully. Number 8. Taking away an analog stick. Ape Escape on the loose. When the series debuted in the late 90s, Ape Escape really showcased the potential of dual analog stick controllers. It also required players to have two analog sticks or else it was impossible to play. However, this time-honored requirement was forgotten when On The Loose launched on the PSP. Transporting. Tell us, what's the problem with launching Ape Escape on the PSP? Oh yeah, it's missing an entire analog stick. On The Loose doesn't carry the blame alone, but it's certainly a contributing factor as to why we haven't had a new Ape Escape in such a long time. Super Mario 64 DS had a similar problem. This game was not meant to be played with a D-pad. <laughs> Number 7. Class 4 Trials – Trials of Mana <laughs> In this 2020 remake, once you've finished the main story, you can beef up your characters to Class 4 by taking on a quest that has you looking for spheres and engaging in boss fights. And while that might sound like a welcome addition, these fights don't make a lot of sense. For starters, Duran fights a ghost of his dad in a public tournament. Weird, but okay. Angela fights a clone of herself, despite having already resolved internal conflicts. As for Hawkeye, Charlotte, and Reese, they all fight bigger versions of common enemies. So it's all rather… unexciting. It honestly felt like this was put in just to pad things out, especially since Kevin was the only one whose trial was particularly interesting. Do you cruelly, 
これを持つ者こそが中人の王さ。Number six, Alec Trevelyan's motive for betrayal. Golden Eye 007. You've given me the perfect fall guy. We're going to use her fingerprint on the Golden Eye control to detonate the weapon. In case you haven't seen Golden Eye the movie, Alec Trevelyan, Agent 006, turns against Bond at MI6 for what happened to his parents. Turns out his parents were Lien's Cossacks, an ethnic minority group from Ukraine and Russia, whom in real life after World War II were executed by the Soviet regime after the British denied them asylum and turned them over to Joseph Stalin. Pretty grim backstory and motive for a villain, right? Well, it's completely rewritten in the 2010 remake. It's not just the banks, James, it's everything the bank has touched. The stock market, financial records, every transaction on every computer in London, all gone in less than four minutes. Trevelyan instead betrays MI6 because the government makes too much money and the banking system sucks. We guess they were trying to make him a more timely, sympathetic villain, but it was definitely an odd choice. Or did you reprogram the buttons? How well do you know me, Alec? Press it and find out. You lose, James. Number five Annette dies twice. Resident Evil 2. No one gets that same one now. Given how detail oriented and complex of a narrative the Resident Evil franchise has, the last thing we needed was a time paradox. And yet, here we are with Resident Evil 2. And its big problem is Annette. I'm sorry, Sherry. In Leon's scenario, she manages to shoot Ada before bleeding out. However, she also shows up in Claire's scenario and dies in the security room. How is it that this character dies in both scenarios when Leon and Claire are experiencing their own events simultaneously? And why didn't anyone take issues with this during the development? Let's see you science your way out of this, Capcom. Number four, nerfing the original Warcraft 3 Reforged. Continue producing grunts until you reach your quest requirement. I am the Warchief. There was simply no way that we could publish this list and not include the now infamous Warcraft 3 remake. Though a very enticing idea in concept, the baffling changes made to the game in Reforged generated widespread outrage. For starters, you could no longer join automated tournaments, form clans, or even create custom campaigns. None of this makes sense. But the spirits tell me that I should trust him. On top of that, several balancing changes were made that practically made Warcraft 3 a completely different game. Oh, and don't get us started on those manipulative EULA policies Blizzard put in place. If you're gonna tell players you own their creations, you're essentially eradicating your entire modding community. The demons are returning. Number three, becoming an edgelord, Space Raiders. If you don't remember the gritty tragedy that was Space Raiders, well, thank your lucky stars. This was pandering at its finest and dirtiest. Space Raiders was a sad attempt at rebooting the Space Invaders franchise. You know, the one in which you command a lone tank and shoot pixelated aliens. Yeah, that's the game they chose to load up with gritty environments and provide us three different protagonists a street kid, a cop, and a well endowed fashion photographer who gets her own shower scene. You know, because Space Invaders needed an injection of drama, edge, and smut. Number two MGS The Matrix Edition Metal Gear Solid The Twin Snakes. We are by no means saying that Twin Snakes is a bad game. However, we really need to be honest with ourselves. There are quite a number of scenes that are just way too ridiculous. We're talking moments where Snake jumps off a missile, manages to no scope with a sniper rifle, dodging bullets miraculously. Basically, it's a lot of wire foo and moves rarely seen outside anime. <laughs> 
Kojima, buddy, these action scenes are great and all, but people fondly remember the first Metal Gear Solid for a reason. Don't you think some of these cutscenes were a little too over the top? Before we reveal our most absurd top pick, here are a few honorable mentions that will allow you to insert your face in your palm and maybe shake your head a little bit too. Changing the boss fights. The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D. Because weak points weren't obvious enough. Gyro controls and 3DS release. Luigi's Mansion. Because we gotta keep this aging handheld alive. A completely different story. Medieval Resurrection because the original story wasn't good enough for PSP. I saw you hanging back, pretending to tie your bootlaces and getting hit by first stray arrow. <laughs> Self-censorship, conquer, live and reloaded, because M-rated games shouldn't swear. A frying pan, you stupid little t Touch controls, Diddy Kong Racing DS because you need to blow into your mic and hurt your wrist for that head start. Want more video game content? Check out our gaming channel Mojo Plays and discover games and ideas you never knew existed. With more lists, breakdowns, and our latest series, Arcade Roulette. Justin and John are in! Oh. Wait, is that Porky Pig? Mm. There's a lot of things being ripped off in this game. Number one. Deviating from the original story, Final Fantasy VII Remake. A second dance, just the two of us. While newly added scenes to flesh out the story of this 90s classic was an absolute given, no one could have predicted the direction Square Enix would go with this hotly anticipated remake. For the most part, the plot sticks to the original Midgar section from the first disc, but starts to derail every now and then once Cloud surprisingly encounters Sephiroth much earlier than he was supposed to. It was the crowning moment of our time together. But that was then, and this is now. From that point on, Cloud is haunted by wraith-like beings called Whispers whenever the plot starts to deviate, which culminates with an ending that makes us wonder just how different the sequel is going to be to the original. That which lies ahead does not yet exist. Do you agree with our picks? Let us know in the comments. And hey, if you're a fan of the song playing right now, be sure to check out the music video for it right here.